Oh, boy, I hope this review doesn't put you to sleep. Get it? Get it? Nah. Anyways, I'm Taylor, and today I want to review The Sandman, season one on Netflix. Uh, yeah, so The Sandman is based on a comic by Neil Gaiman. It was a 75-issue series that ran from 1989 to 1996, and it is one of my favorite comic books of all time. So I was optimistically, cautiously, pessimistically, whatever the hell, when I figured, found out they were going to do an adaptation of it. And did I like it? Let's get into it. So yeah, uh, adapted, adapted from a comic book by Neil Gaiman. Uh, it, it deals a lot with uh, the theme of change and growth and, and personal development through the eyes of Morpheus, the King of Dreams, a.k.a. the Sandman, the titular character who's played by Tom, Tom Sturridge. And, uh, yeah, there's other supporting characters that show up throughout these ten episodes, and their show is mostly pretty well cast, I thought. Uh, some of the standouts to me, I love Stephen Fry and his role. I don't get it, want to get into what it is because that's a bit of a spoilery thing. Uh, I love the actor that played John D, a.k.a. Dr. Destiny. Uh, the character of Rose Walker was really well cast, as was uh, Jenna Coleman as Joanna Constantine. I thought they were all fantastic. Uh, some of the rest of the cast hit or miss. Lida Hall, Lita Hall, the, the actress that played her I didn't dig. But for the most part, I, I thought that the show was really well cast. And the plot... Uh, and without getting into a whole lot of spoilers, it could be a mostly spoiler for your view. I'm going to touch on a couple of very broad strokes. So if you don't want to know anything, uh, stop watching. And go watch it for yourself and make your own damn opinion. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, mostly broad strokes. Morpheus gets captured by humans, uh, and this is what happens to him after that. And so that's that's the general, that's the general broad plot of the show. Uh, several episodes don't deal with Sandman a whole lot, the actual uh, Morpheus or Dream or whatever, and that's similar to the comics. Uh, there are issues issues of the, sh of the book where he was just barely in it, if at all, and, and that follows in this series. There are several issues, especially in the latter half of the season, that don't deal much with uh, the Dream character himself, but they do deal with dreams and their effects on their lives and dreaming and what it can mean. Uh, and the, and the, play, the pacing, it starts off at a fairly high, fast pace. And that does also slow down about the midway point. Uh, I know some folks have, like, criticized that. Uh, especially, they're like, well, that episode of the diner. There's an episode of the diner. It's, it takes away, that's the other spoiler. There's a diner in the show. They're like, ah, that one really slowed down and didn't do it for me. I liked it. It, it also, that does tie in directly to the comic book and, and uh, some of the comic book roots. Uh, and, and, yeah, the plot, it, it each uh, the first couple issues, episodes are one kind of arc, and then the second half is another kind of arc. And there are a couple standalones in there that tie in to the series as a whole. And if the series gets renewed, uh, some of the characters will probably make a comeback, and some of the plot points will probably be, re probably be revisited. But as, as of now, uh, there's some one-and-done characters in here. Uh, yeah, uh, the special effects, I thought were also mostly pretty well done. Uh, and that those kind of faded a bit as the season went along. Uh, the high, first episode and the, the first two or three really heavy on the special effects. And then they do use special effects as, uh, for the rest of the series, but not quite as much or as often as they did when they were setting up the world and the characters. Uh, so I didn't... There, there's a few instances where, eh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't quite dig it. As far as, like, you can know you knew it was a special effect and you knew it was CG. But uh, and minor nitpicking... That uh, didn't really affect my enjoyment of the series. Uh, and, oh, and before I forget, I also thought the character of uh, the Corinthian was very well cast. I can't remember his name. But, yeah, uh, the Corinthian, who was played by oh, Boyd Holbrook and, and Tom Sturridge, they had in their interaction, and they, that's uh, Tom Sturridge's plays Sandman. Sorry, rambling. I'm, I'm about to fall asleep. I'm dreaming. Uh, but, yeah, the Boyd Holbrook character of the Corinthian, also very well cast as a, as a villainous character. Uh, with some charisma, uh, and we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought that the casting was well done. I thought the plot actually was pretty well done. The pacing, it did slow down in the middle. It did, and that's not a necessarily a bad thing. I do think if it continued at sort of the breakneck pace of the first few episodes, it would have worn out the audience by the time it got to the end. Uh, did it need to be a 10-episode season? Eh, it's debatable. You probably could have compressed the last one or two issues into one 
last one or two episodes into into one issue, but I kind of d- d- liked the fact that it slowed down and came became a little bit more deliberate. Uh, there are changes from the comic book, but they're not significant. They, there's character swaps, there's gender swaps, and a few other things like that, and they do kind of change how characters are introduced in the series versus the comic, and that's some of that I think is just cleaning up what happened in the comic. The comic had 75 issues to tell its story. And I don't think Netflix knew or still knows whether or not it's getting a second season or how long this is going to be able to run. So they condensed some of it. And then they expanded other bits. And they kind of shifted around, like, story arcs a little bit and and kind of just made them sort of a little bit more neat and tidy. I don't have a problem with that either. Overall, I thought it was a pretty well-done series. Is it as good as the comic? No. Uh, There are some issues. It's just... And some of that has to do with the casting, and, and uh, some of the acting is a little wooden, and it just doesn't seem to have that same kind of gritty goth magic that the series had when it first came out. And that's probably not going to be able to be captured anyways, because it's dealing with my memories and my dreams, get it, get it, of the whole series and the, and the comic, and where I was in life. And I, it is po- impossible to like tie that into a modern 2022 Netflix series. Uh, but I do think they did as well a job as they could. It's the best adaptation of a Neil Gaiman book by far. Like, uh, American Gods, not so great. I um, can't remember what that uh, Neverwhere, <laughs> not very good. Good Omens uh, was pretty decent. That was not just a Neil Gaiman book, though. That was also Terry Pratchett. But this, I think, was probably up there with Good Omens as far as level of adaptations of Neil's work. Uh, I'm hoping to get to season two. Uh, they did kind of wrap things up in season one so that it's not... There are some plot threads that dangle and there's some characters that are introduced and there's some machinations afoot and scheming behind the scenes and all that that doesn't really get resolved. And that, I think, will play into the later seasons if it does get the later seasons. But given the fact that Netflix is losing money like a sieve and uh, all these uh, streaming services are fucking tanking and not doing so hot apparently other than Disney because Disney rules the world. We'll see. Uh, Warner Brothers, I don't think, has the rights to this one. And so some of the DC characters that are in the comic aren't really don't really make an appearance in the show and they get shifted around a little bit in that regards as well. I probably should have touched on that earlier, but I'm stream of consciousness this whole review, people. It's kind of what I do. So yeah, they, they, if you're if you're a lover of the comic, you'll probably like the series. You might not love it, but you'll probably like it, and you probably will notice some of the changes. Uh, and your mileage may vary as far as like what, whether or not you think those changes affect the story. I don't think that the the changes affect the gr- broad, grand strokes of things or the main plot points. I think they're little adjustments here and there, and I think Neil signed off on a lot of them. Not that that means much. He's he his stuff again doesn't always translate well to other medium, but yeah, it, it's it's a it's a decent show. Is it perfect? No. Is it fantastic? Eh, maybe. It's I I would probably on a scale of one to nine point eight eh, because that's comic book grading. It's not a ten. It's not a gem man. It's not a nine eight. I would say eight five nine zero oh, though. I think it's a pretty solid outing and it and uh, it's an enjoyable time. I did not binge watch it. It's not necessarily a binge worthy show. Like, it, it's 10 episodes, and each episode is uh, 45 minutes to an hour. They vary in length, which is one thing I do like about streaming services, is the episodes can be as long as they need to be to tell the story. That's not the case with some of the old network stuff. But yeah, it, it's not a show where you're probably going to sit down and binge all 10 episodes in one sitting. It's a, it's a little bit much for that. And given the so- somewhat slow pace of the second half of the season, probably not bingeable. But I had a good time. I did not fall asleep during it. And I didn't visit Slumberland and Little Nemo. That's a different comic series altogether. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. Is it the best show ever? No. That's probably Deadwood or The Wire. But it, it's pretty darn good. So let me know what you thought. Have you seen the show? Uh, did you like it? Have you read the comic? Did you like it? Which do you prefer? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, if you want to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do it. I have a free newsletter on my Substack, which is taylorwinder.substack.com. I'll, I'll leave a thingy here if I remember. Uh, I, you can buy merchandise from taylorwinder.com where I sell t-shirts and other apparel. Or just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I'm getting close to 1,000 viewer uh, subs. And when I get to 1,000, I'll do some giveaways. And you can win free comic books and stuff. So please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell. And yeah, that's kind of about it. I will talk to you all later. And even if you're the main character of a book that's trapped for a 1,000 years and you kind of look like Robert Plant, uh, don't be a dick. So yeah, Robert Smith. Robert Smith, not Robert Plant. Robert Smith, the cure. The cure. The guy's the cure. 
Good night, everybody.